We had a little bit more on 1.6. There's a little bit more funky equations in there. Uh, so I wanted to cover them. Let's take a look at equations with, we'll start off with equations with rational exponents. For example, x to the three halves equals 216. There's a couple ways to do this. The most straightforward way is to raise both sides to the power that cancels out this power when you multiply it. So like raise both sides to the two thirds power. And we'll get to what that answer is in a second. Let's take a look at doing it a different way. This is really like the cube or the square root of X cubed equals 216. So I could start off taking the cube root of x, or cube root of both sides. And I will get the square root of x equals 6. When you take an odd root, There's no need for plus or minus. Whatever sign it is, it stays that way. When we take an even root, like we're going to, or now we got to square it, square both sides, and we get x equals 36. So if you're ever wondering about how the signs are going to end up with when you're dealing, dealing with these weird exponents as, as fractions, uh, it might be easier to do it like this. When you do an odd root, you don't need to do the plus or minus. When you do, when it's an even root, when we have like a square root or a fourth root or an even root, you have to do the plus or minus. Um, I just have a question, like, do you know the, the, let me see. Mm, the 216, why, why that, that one is not like, the 216, why that one is not like the square? What do you mean why it's not like a square? Um, because the three, you know, the, the, the two over three, um, the three should be like out of the root and the two should be inside. So I if we were to follow it with the root of the exponent thing, <clears throat> do this as, I could either do it as 216 squared with the one third on the outside, which sounds like, I do not want to square 216. Fuck all oh. that. So the other option is doing the one third on the inside and the square on the outside. Work smarter, not harder. You oh. don't want to try to find, especially if you're doing stuff without a calculator, Eventually, if you're going into the STEM fields, you're in it long enough, you will start recognizing not just the squared values of basic like one through ten, but the cube values as well. That you just you you've seen them enough that you go, oh, two sixteen, that's six cubed. Okay, yeah, thank you. But whatever two sixteen squared is, there's no way I'm going to identify that the cube root of that was thirty six. Ever, like ever in my life without a calculator. So that would be why I did that. Good question. Uh, we could kick it up a notch. Let's see, what do we want to go with? Let's do with x plus seven to the two fifths equals four.
So we can do it both ways. We can do this where we do the reciprocal exponent and maybe take a look at what that looks like. This looks like four to the one half to the fifth power. Four to the one, this is the square root of four, which is gonna mean plus or minus two in there to the fifth power. So this one should have two different answers when we spit it out. Two, let's see, two to the fifth power is two, four, eight, 16, 32. We should end up with plus or minus 32, just for that part alone. The left side would be X plus seven. When we finish it, we subtract seven from both sides. And we get x equals negative seven plus or minus 32. When you have it and you can combine these, like you don't have a radical, you don't have a complex number, you should combine these. This is x equals negative seven plus 32 or x equals negative seven minus 32. And those are two answers that you can find. And you may not need a calculator if you do a little bit of mathematical mental agility. The other option of doing it the other way is if I have the x plus seven to the two fifths, I can rewrite this as the fifth root of x plus seven squared equals four. So when I take the square of both sides, I get the fifth root of x plus seven equals plus or minus two. And when we raise both sides to the fifth power, thank you, we get back to where we were earlier, x plus seven equals plus or minus 32. So depending on which way you're more comfortable doing with, please do it that way. You guys ready for some more? Oh, I see pins still going. Let me just, uh, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I will. Sorry. I'm done. Thank you. <clears throat> a couple other people are still writing. Give me a second. So, Josue and uh, Chris and anyone else is there oh. on Lauren? So, uh, last topic in this 1.6 section is equations that look quadratic but are not.
give you a couple examples of ones that fit this category. We're going to have x minus 3 to the 1 half minus 6 times x minus 3 to the 1 4 plus 8 equals 0. And 15x to the negative 2 minus 4x to the negative 1. I'm going to move this three over and just have it like that. These are still solvable. You just got to do one more step. In this step, you will grow very, very used to, because uh, we always, almost always use the same fucking letter for it. It's called a U substitution or a U sub. And the way you can recognize if something looks quadratic but isn't, but we can still kind of do it, is if you have two things with the same thing, like x minus 3 here, and the exponent on one is double the exponent on the other. Like 1 half is twice 1 fourth. Negative 2 is twice negative 1. So the exponent on one is twice the exponent on the other. Okay, so um, like the first number, it should be like twice the, the second or, okay. If they're in the right order, they could be in the wrong order, but as long as one of them is double the other, so like there's a one fourth is like 25 cents. One half of the dollar is like 50 cents. 50 cents is clearly double 25 cents. The way oh, you okay. go about doing that when you recognize that one is double the other. And usually if you're like taking it, you have a problem and you haven't learned how to solve anything like this any other way, it's probably some trick, trick way of doing it. Like we're going to do now. What we're oh. going to do on this one is we're going to take whatever this is and I'm going to call that u. Um, so, because like in quadratic formulas, like one of them also is one is like the one variable is, has like, is like double the, the exponent of the other. Exactly. So. That's exactly what we're looking for. And so if we see that, we can make it look quadratic, even though it is. Yeah, because you what we're doing right now. You can, so, yeah. You're going to write, I mean, um, it would be good if you could like write a quadratic formula and compare it like, yeah, because it's kind I'm, of I'm getting there. Yeah. Wait, just, just wait for it. Just okay. see it. Sorry. It's okay. Just wait for it. If I make this look like the U, we can write the base one up there if it helps. AX squared plus BX plus C. This is like a one right there. So we're looking for something... The quadratic formula or quadratic equation, one of them is double the other. We can force these to look like that, but it just won't be with an X. So if I take the one that's the smaller one with the, the smaller exponent, and I set that equal to U, if I square both sides here, I get U squared equals X minus three to the one fourth times two, which is x minus 3 to the 1 half, which is this term right here. And we'll do it on this other one in a second. And we'll do it, I'll show, we'll set up a third problem, but uh, I'll want, I, we do want to go on after that. So this is u squared minus 6u plus 8 equals 0. And now we can use our regular quadratic equation solving things. If you can factor it, factor it and solve it that way. This does factor. This factors into u minus 2 and u minus 4.
If I solve that, I get u equals two and u equals four. The next hard part is remembering that we didn't start with u, so we don't want to end with u. Once you get that solved, you want to plug this stuff back in. X minus three to the one fourth equals two. X minus three to the one fourth equals four. And you keep solving. If I raise both sides to the fourth power, I get X minus three equals 16 on this one. And X minus three equals 256 on that one. And what I'm doing right there, just to be clear, is I'm raising everything to the fourth power. Finally, we solve and we get X equals 19 or X equals 259. Fancy, huh? Pain in the ass, huh? I know. I know it is. It's very cool. It's kind of cool, though, right? Let's draw a dark line here and take a look at the next one. Wait just a second. If you're if you're ready, try working ahead on this and getting ahead of me. Otherwise, I'm going to let people finish writing. <clears throat> What kind of substitution can I make here? We want to set u equal to the one that has the exponent that isn't doubled. So in this case, u equals x to the first power. And I think for later on, when I use it, I'm going to write that as 1 over x, because I think it might be a little bit easier to see what we're doing later on when we, if we have it that way. If I square both sides here, though, I get u squared equals x to the negative 2. So that's my u, and that's my u squared. I need things that multiply to negative 3 times 15 and add to negative 4. Negative 3 times 15 is negative 45. Negative 9 and 5 will work. So I'm going to write this as 15u squared minus 9u plus 5u minus 3 equals 0. And we'll start doing some grouping. Uh, this doesn't have anything in common, so I'm going to say that that's plus 1 times 5u minus 3, which means I've got another 5u minus 3 over here, and that looks like it needs a 3u. So if I finish, I've got 3u plus 1, 5u minus 3 equals 0. Mm -hmm. 
To solve this, we set each one equal to zero. 3u plus 1 equals 0, 5u minus 3 equals 0. So I get 3u equals negative 1, u equals negative 1 third, 5u equals 3, u equals 3 fifths. Okay, so we didn't start with u, so we're not gonna end with u. u was the same as one over x. So I'm gonna replace these. One over x, I'll put what I had initially, x to the negative one equals one over x is negative one third, or one over x equals three fifths. Any ideas on how to solve this? <clears throat> Multiply by by three x. I mean the left. So get rid of the fractions. Open. You're saying get rid of the fractions, right? Yeah. So we can multiply through by the common denominator. Uh, another way, when you have it like this, you could cross multiply and then put the right, put the three up here times the one, and the negative one times the x. Oh, okay, okay. That's that's does the same thing. It's just a little bit faster. I could do that here. I could cross multiply, and I will get one times five equals three times x. Oh, five. it's. it's I, I confuse I confuse the the equal of the x um to the exponent of negative one. I thought it was a a plus. Oh, I confuse it. And so we do not want negative x. Uh, we multiply both sides by negative one, and that'll change it. And we get negative three equals x. Here we divide by three. And we get five thirds equals X. That's the slowest way. Do you guys see a relationship between these two? These two equations? They're flipped over, right? They're inverse. All you got to do is just flip the shit over. So if you have one over x equals something, just flip it over. You get x over one equals one over question mark. Or flip that thing over. So I had one over x equals three fifths. I'm going to flip it. And I get x equals five over three. That's the faster way. The cross multiplying always works. And we're not going to solve the next one, but I want to at least give you a chance to try to figure out what the u substitution is first. We'll set up the u, u equation.
What would make a good use substitution here? Um, I would substitute to the x um, to the exponent of fourth um, by u u square. Yeah. Yeah. Which means the u is the x squared, right? Yeah, yeah. And you'd go through and you'd solve normally. And then replace the U afterwards. We're not going to do that. We did a couple problems where you practice doing that. I want to take a look at what let's get started on 1.7, uh, which is inequalities with equations. Well, let me leave this up a little bit longer, make sure everyone's got it. Got a preview first. You guys ready? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, 1.7. You know what? This is another section. Let me hit stop and start. So, we got two different videos here. <laughs> 